gonna be ready when the hurt comes my way. I wanna be ready when the hurt comes my way. Psalms chapter 6 verse 2. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, for I am weak. O Yahweh, heal me, for my bones are vexed. All right. First and foremost, we're going to give our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakadash, Rakadah, Wa, Rakadam, to the elect and the one third of the children of Israel. Double honors to the teachers and the head apostles of the great millstone who grew well. Peace and salutations to the Akim who are pushing out this work with truth and sincerity. Also, Barakatha to the Akwathim who are listening as well. This is Providence in Babylon, Tampa Bay, Florida. My name is Brother Daniel and by my side. Brother Dane. All right, and he'll be my reader tonight. And uh, the class is called Take Not That Holy Spirit From Me. Okay, you know, we're coming into some serious times where, you know, um, like, the, like the evil... Um, like the evil vibration of uh, of America or right, Babylon the Great. All right, Job nine twenty four. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a very rooted and um, you know ground grounding within this truth, man. Like, like through the spirit and power, y'all bashim shy because the Lord is only looking for the ones who are doing His will with true sincerity and. You know, he's looking for the ones who are, are willing to fight for him and also to remain in this thing. You know what I'm saying? Not being condemned, um, not letting your conscience condemn you. You know what I'm saying? You know, not allowing to be, you know, not being faint hearted. You know what I'm saying? And not being pricked to the most to the sins. You know what I'm saying? Psalms 51 is the main um, Psalms chapter that every brother and sister should read. You know, we must read Psalms 51. You know what I'm saying? Asking the Lord to forgive us, to have mercy on us. So let's get that, all right? You know, because, you know, you know, every brother and sister, you know, within this walk, in this straight narrow path, you know, it's going through afflictions, going through uh, troubles in their lives. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a... Uh, it's getting tougher. It's not getting easier. It's only going to get tougher, you know, and we don't want the Lord to forsake us during our afflictions. We want the Lord to deal with us more. You know what I'm saying? We want to get closer to the Lord more and more each day. Now, as the scripture says in uh, James chapter four, verse eight, draw nigh to Yahweh, he will draw nigh to you. So we, you know, if we jump to verse seven, you know, submit yourselves to Yahweh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That should be everyday thing that we should do on a daily basis, you know, by the way of praying, by the way of exhorting one another within the brotherhood, you know, you know what I'm saying? Knowing the scriptures, applying the scriptures, listening to the videos of, uh, uh, of the Akim, you know, and even the elders and apostles of the, uh, like, of the great millstone, which is the, who, who teach the 100% truth, man. So we must grow in grace. You know, ask for mercy and seek out the Lord during our afflictions, man. So, let's grab Psalm 51. You got it? Come. <clears throat> this is the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse <clears throat> 1. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, according to thy loving kindness, uh -huh. according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Wash me thro thoroughly. From my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Come, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, because we have much iniquities. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of transgressions. Not only that the life that we live now, but also in our past lives. You know, regeneration is within the Bible. Uh, regeneration, uh, like goes into reincarnation. You know, you were here on Earth multiple times, so you lived several lives. You know, so therefore you have sins in those lives as well. 
you know what I'm saying? And it follows you unless you what? Unless you repent and do the Lord's will. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord will blot out those iniquities, those transgressions that you have done that offended the Lord. You know? So, so read verse 2. Again. Verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Come. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Come. For I acknowledge my transgressions. You must acknowledge. You must be aware of what you've done. You know what I'm saying? And be and be a man about it. You know what I'm saying? The Lord wants you to confess your transgressions towards him so he'll be able to deal with you at a higher level. Because the Lord because the Lord already knows what's going on. He sees you. As the scripture says in the book of Sirach, his eyes are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. You know what I'm saying? He sees every single individual doing what they're doing every single day. Every single split second of the day. So, the Lord already knows what, you, what what's in your heart because He tries the reins of your heart as well. So He knows what's going on with your heart. He's no He know He knows what you're doing when you're around brothers or when you're not around brothers. So, it's for, it, and uh and for you, you know, to get a stronger relationship with your heart by Shemuel Shai, you must confess before the Lord. You know, be a man and let Him know, even in detail. You know. So you can get the whole matter out so he'd be able to what? To help you, all right? To give you a solution, okay? And that solution is repentance and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments at the best of your ability. And he what? And he will cleanse you, okay? Now go ahead. Verse 4, against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Mm -hmm. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou desireth truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Come, here you go. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Come, hyssop is a is a is a plant. Yeah, um, it's like a like a like a plant that you know gets you clean, like a like a soapy substance. You know, you can look it up online, and uh, it's like a soapy substance. So, pretty much, King David is like pretty much asking the Lord to, uh, like to wash him through the Spirit. All right, you uh, like a like a spiritual hyssop to cleanse the spirit. Okay, now go ahead. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Come on, and that joy and gladness is what? These scriptures, all right? Because these scriptures are life, okay? These scriptures are the way of life, the the, uh, the doctrine of life, all right? According to uh, Sirach 1919, the doctrine of life, you know what I'm saying? These, these scriptures will cleanse you. It will heal you. It will give you joy and gladness. It'll give you hope. All right? The list goes on. Okay? Go ahead. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, creating me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Con creating me and creating me a clean heart. That's what we're aiming for, brothers and sisters. A clean heart. We want a clean heart before the Lord. We want we want to be left blameless. All right. So when He changes the reins of our heart, and it's clean, it's only going to come out what great before the Lord, powerful. You know, I I know being in this flesh of, the, of these chains of darkness. You know, we we think about you know out out of nowhere we have you know evil thoughts and wicked imaginations, but our goal is to have a clean heart. And what? Oh, Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. That should be an everyday thing. That should be an everything, an everyday thing that you should ask before the Lord every single day. A clean heart and a right spirit. You need a clean heart and a right spirit in these last days. You need it bad. We all need it bad. All right? Go ahead. Verse 11. Cast me not away 
from thy presence mm -hmm. and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You heard that? Cast me not away from thy presence. Because if you don't have Yahweh Shema Shah, man, if you don't have the Lord within your presence, the holy angels, that is scary, man. King David knew the deal. All right? He, don't, he didn't want to lose the presence of the Lord. And he said, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. That's scary. You know what I'm saying? Imagine living in the world, you know, which a lot of people are living in the world without the uh, without the Rakakadash, which is scary. Because if you don't have the Rakakadash, you don't know what's going on. You, you, you're sleeping. Okay? You don't want to sleep in these last days. You want to be circumspect, awake, aware, measuring the times diligently within itself, being in the scriptures, and to be on fire for the Lord, you know? Okay, go ahead. Verse, verse 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. Mm -hmm. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. God. Verse 12 says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with the with thy free spirit. Okay? So the list goes down all the way to what? To verse 13. And then then will I teach transgressions thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So when you when you do all these things that's King that, that King David is asking for, then you can teach transgressions thy ways. Then now, when you get yourself clean, when you get once you get yourself right within your subconscious and in the spirit, then you can start teaching others how to do it. But if you if you're not right, then you can't teach unless unless you get yourself right first. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You, you like uh you know like an analogy man you got to get the water out of your boat first before you get water on somebody else's boat unless what you and that person is going to drown you don't want you and that person to drown you got to save yourself first then go save that other person okay i'll go ahead king verse 14 deliver me from blood guiltiness oh yahweh thou power of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Come, let's get blood. Um, actually, yeah, let's get blood guiltiness from the blue letter. Let's find out what that is. Okay. Was that verse fourteen? Yes, come. On. All right. So Psalms, chapter fifty-one, verse fourteen. All right, Psalms fifty-one, fourteen. For water, King. I on the ball. Uh, so, go into the interlinear. We're not gonna click on the the sound because uh, it will ruin the the recording. So, blood guiltiness. Interlinear. There you go. So it's a. Uh, it's Strong's 1817 uh, 18, um, uh, Dom. So, Blood of Wine. Okay. Uh, pretty much it says, uh, Blood as that which, when shed, caused death a man, uh, of man or an animal. By analogy, the juice of the grape, figuratively, especially in plural, bloodshed. So, yeah, Khan. Yeah, bloodshed. Uh, because, you know, it, um, it says, "Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Yahweh, thou, um, um, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness." So yeah, come on, like blood guiltiness of of a man, pretty much, you know, uh, the blood guiltiness that he did when he went uh, to Bathsheba, his best friend's uh, um, wife, and uh, and pretty much, you know, lust came in and he. Took out his best friend. So that's why Psalms 51, you know, he was pleading to the Lord, asking for forgiveness for what he'd done to his best friend and, and you know, and, uh, and taking his best friend and wife and killing his best friend in the front lines of the war just so he can get his wife, man. So the Lord, you know, 
that King David was asking for forgiveness because, you know, we're not perfect in this flesh, man. So Psalms 51, when, when he was, you know, pleading and begging the Lord not to take away the Holy Spirit, and you know what I'm saying? Because we're all guilty. We all fall short of the glory. You know what I'm saying? So everyone should always go to Psalms 51. Okay? You know, but, but, but remember, King David was uh, a man after the Lord's heart. You know what I'm saying? He was a powerful man. And the Lord really loved King David. Okay? Verse 15, go ahead. Oh, Yahweh, show me how shy. Open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Mm hmm for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. God, so, you know, it says it, like, so it says, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Okay? Thou delightest not in burnt offering. So the Lord don't care about that. But this is what the Lord really cares about. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17. The sacrifices of Yahweh are a broken spirit. A broken and a concrete heart. Contrite. Contrite heart. So lock you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yahweh, thou wilt not despise. Come. So, the Lord really, um, like the like the perfect sacrifice is a, uh, is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. All right? And I have a perfect precept that goes along with that. Okay? Okay. So, I believe it's Psalms 38, 13, I believe. No, 38, and I can't try. No, Psalms uh, 34, call to one. Psalms 34 and... Con in 18, Psalms chapter 34, verse 18. Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. All right. Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. So he's closer to you when you're in a broken heart and he will save you. When you are in a contrite spirit. And let's look at the word contrite. So Psalms 34 and 18. Of the blue letter Bible. Okay. You know like I said. Uh, I'm not going to click on the recording. Because uh, like click on the word. Because it's going to ruin the recording. So Psalms. Uh, 34. And 18. It's. The Blue Letter Bible is is a very powerful tool, which was recommended by the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone. Okay? Very powerful tool, and it will help you grow within your study. Study to show that self approved unto Yahweh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Separating the Hebrew from the Greek. So. All right. H H uh seventeen ninety three Dakar, all right. And it says uh, you know, contrite. Contrite is a very very uh, very much crushed and broken, very small. Hence, as a substance, very small dust. So pretty much, that contrite. Spirit is when you're broken down into matter, when you're broke down, when you when you feel disintegrated within the spirit. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is closer to you when you are broken in uh broken in the spirit, when you have a broken heart. You know what I'm saying? The Lord can deal with you better. Cause what? He I said um so the Lord he breaks you down and then he builds you back up even stronger. That's what the Lord does. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. All right? What? Through what? Th through afflictions. All right? So during our afflictions, we must seek after the Lord. Because what? 
Hosea 5 and 15. Hosea 5 and 15 says, I will, I will go and return to my place, which is, you know, Yahweh speaking, till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction, they will seek me early. All right. So during our afflictions, we're going to seek after the Lord. What does the scripture say in Isaiah 55 and 6? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. All right. Begging and pleading the Lord for mercy. Begging and pleading the Lord not to take away the Holy Spirit from you. All right. You must be in that type of energy every single day. Begging the Lord to not take the Holy Spirit from you. Asking the Lord to help you grow in this grace period and also do, by the way, doing these lessons, feeding, feeding the flock, exhorting one another within the brotherhood, not forsaking the assembly. The list goes on, man. Okay. Um, you can grab uh, um, the Psalms, uh, Psalms 25. Come on. Come on. Okay, so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 25, verse 14. Mm -hmm. The secret the secret of Yahweh is with them that fear him. Oh. And he will show them his covenant. The secret of Yahweh is with them that fear him. That fear him. That is the beginning of all wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the first step. There is no other step. The first step is what? Is to fear the Lord. It says the secret of Yahweh is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The promise. Okay. The promise, man. And, and the Lord is mainly dealing with Israel, but not just Israel, the remnant of Israel, the elect one third of the children of Israel. OK, he's dealing with them right now because only they will understand the promise. They will understand uh, the prophecies. They will understand all things of, of the mysteries of the kingdom. OK, go ahead. Verse 15. My eyes are ever towards Yahweh, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Mm -hmm. My eyes are ever toward Yahweh Bashim al Shai, because our main focus and your main focus should be Yahweh Bashim al Shai, your first love. All right, your first love is the Heavenly Father and the Son. That is your first love of your life. Okay, nobody else. Okay. That is your first love. That should be your main focus. And it says, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net, out of the snares of uh, of this captivity. You know, there's so many snares, so many stumbling blocks that we want to be delivered out of. You know, go ahead. Verse 16. Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, mm -hmm. for I am desolate and afflicted. Con. Go ahead. Verse 17, the trouble of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Come on, and that's what we want. We want the Lord uh, to deliver us because, because at times, the, you know, our heart is troubled. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, uh, like here and there, you catch a little anxiety. Here and there, you catch a little affliction or you catch more affliction than usual, you know? And said, oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. We want to be delivered out of our afflictions and our distresses. We want to be delivered from being in like in a always sorrowful spirit. We want we want to be delivered out of those things. We want that joy. We want that mercy from the Lord. As the scripture says, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. I want to grab that real quick and then we go and we're gonna hop back to uh um Psalms 25, you know. So, ye that hope, um, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. Okay, it said, uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 9, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. That's what we want. And where's that everlasting joy and mercy? 
the kingdom. All right. And we can receive that um, some of that joy and some of that mercy now before the kingdom, you know, because the Lord is a great balance. He He's the great. He great. He's great at what he does. He's great at blessings. He's great at everything. And he's terrible of, you know, of the, you know, I kill and I make a life. I wound and I heal. He does all. He does all things. He is the almighty power. You know what I'm saying? But he, but he's, but he's a loving God as well. He's, he's a loving power as well. He will bless you if you do his will. Okay. If you do his will and you are pleasing to his sight, he will bless you more than you even can imagine. Okay. Because he loves you. He loves you so much, man. Well, they're listening to this. He loves you. Remember that he loves you so much. He just wants you to get right. That's it. All right. Verse eight. Um, Psalms 25 and 18. Come. Verse 18. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Come. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. The Lord knows what you're going through. He knows what kind of pain you're going through. He knows what kind of heartbreaks you've been going through. He knows when your past is trying to haunt you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, you want the Lord to forgive you for everything that you've done while you were in the world, before you knew about the truth and the way you offended him. Even within the truth, you want the Lord to forgive you. And if you want the Lord to forgive you, you got to forgive those who trespass against you. You got to forgive uh, those who had an ought against, you know, an ought against. Forgive every single person that trespass against you and the Lord will forgive you. Okay. That is the main thing. If you have mercy on um, of, of others, he will definitely have mercy on you, you know. Look upon my affliction and my pain. And every brother, every brother and sister is going through some sort of pain. You know, whether body affliction, you know, spiritual attacks. You know what I'm saying? You know, being haunted in the past. You know, list goes on, man. You know, every brother and sister is going through it. But we all, want, at the end of the day, we all want the Lord to forgive us for our sins and to have mercy on us. Okay? So, we're going to grab the last precept of the Psalms 119. Come. Come. If you got any precept to add, let me know. Come. Come. So, grab Psalms 119, verse 9. And stop at verse 11. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Beth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed hereto according to thy word. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. This word alone will cleanse you like we said earlier. Okay. It will cleanse you. It will put a right spirit within you. It will create a clean heart. It will do all these things for you. If you believe it. If you believe these scriptures. All right. And you apply these scriptures. Okay. Verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Mm -hmm. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. Read that again. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. One more time. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. You see, if you hide the words within your heart, within your la'a, your subconscious. That I might not sin against thee. All right. Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments at the best of your ability. Keeping all the Lord's sayings. All right? Hide it within your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart 
that I might not sin against thee. The whole goal is to offend the Lord less. Okay? Offend the Lord less. I want you to grab Syrah 17.25 and we're going to end it on that. Con. Okay? This is the book of Syrah, chapter 17, verse 25. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Return unto Yahweh Shem Al Shai and forsake thy sins. Mm -hmm. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. And what? And offend less. And offend less. Return unto the Lord. For, all right. Return unto the Lord. Forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. As, as you see a step process. Step one, return to the Lord. Step two, forsake thy sins. Step three, make thy prayer before his face. Step four, offend less. That should be an every single day thing. Okay? And that's going to help you grow in grace. All right? I hope this class was edifying to the elect. Kahalah. Yeah, how Bashim Yao Shai Bashim Rakabodash. If this was edifying to you, it's edifying to the elect. Till next time we say Shalom. Shalom.